<laughs> we'll turn the, turn that off. Oh no! You got to be kidding! I'm gonna talk while it does that. Wow! This is great. Okay. Woohoo! Yay for tech! Well, so my name is Doran Cox. I'm a farmer and. Uh, um, at Tuckaway Farm, uh, one of the founders of uh, FarmHack and FarmOS uh, with Mike Stenta here, and also the uh, research director at Wolf's Neck Center for Ag and the Environment. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, how uh, software fits into agriculture. And, um, and so I'm going to present FarmOS, but also the context of how software is really or sort of the tools we use in general are a reflection of how we understand our environment. And software is actually a language to describe systems and our understanding of how social systems work together, how economic systems work, and how environmental systems work. And so uh, the PharmOS software is really a representation of our best understanding of how all those things come together. Um, and specifically to, uh, to affect how we're going to work with our landscape and improve our soils and work towards uh, land restoration and land regeneration. Um, so I'm going to show a really quick uh, video that gives a quick, an introduction. If you were here last year, you may have seen this, but it gives a, an introduction to the PharmOS uh, software platform. And then we'll go into some context and the progress we've made in the last year towards really building out this, uh, this uh, collaborative vision, recognizing that agriculture, again, this is part of the process that we're going through is connecting agriculture with human health and environmental health, and really seeing that, uh, that agriculture is, is not an individual effort. A agriculture is a shared human endeavor. It's, it's how we express how we understand our environment. It's how we interact uh, productively or destructively. Um, and so I think uh, I'm going to so dive into that in a, in a little bit. Um, but here, let me quick show you this video. This was pu uh, put together as part of a series as, um, that uh, was put together by uh, GODON, or the Global Open Data for Agriculture and Nutrition, a UN program to start to unify a lot of uh, the data and software uh, programs around the world. And so this is one, uh, their profile of the PharmOS platform. So this is a uh, pedal power tractor, human powered. The amount of horsepower that is on a normal uh, tractor is used to power the tractor itself. We grow over 100 different crops, so a very diversified farm. And one of the motivations for creating FarmOS is to be able to manage a highly diversified operation and all the complexities associated with that. I believe every farm should be a research farm, and part of what we're doing here is uh, collecting data that can be shared. Uh, globally, even. All set. Farming. Aerial imagery in general is a very fast, non-destructive way to collect a tremendous amount of environmental information about the farm, both for crops, but also from uh, forest health, water health, and other systems it allows us to elevate our perspective, uh, quite literally. So this is just a, uh, a Raspberry Pi open source, essentially a mini computer, and it's connected 
to a Wi-Fi connection there and a simple USB temperature uh, probe, and it's uh, acting as both a data logger as well as communicating and logging the temperatures it records here onto uh, FarmOS. The hardware is in the range of uh, maybe less than fifty dollars. Now that was a year ago. And you can buy here one for we have five dollars. The page on FarmOS that's uh, profiling the, the sensor in, and here's the current value. So. 32 degrees Celsius currently, which is within acceptable range. It's very important to, to be able to monitor the temperatures and other environmental conditions to match what uh, the current state of our crop production is and to manage the soil moisture levels, uh, humidity levels, and temperature. FarmOS is a management and a record keeping system that is based essentially on creating a website. Uh, that's particular to that farm. What we aim to do with FarmOS is understand a farm at its most fundamental nature so that we can look at a survey quick on the map of which sensors are currently available. Here we can see a map of the current state of where animals are on the landscape, either individual animals or in some cases flocks or, or herds or groups of animals. We also have the ability to integrate other types of data into our system, like the USDA soil survey. Here's the USDA soil survey data overlaid on our own farm. The intention is to be able to have democratized access to environmental data so that anybody has access to high quality, high resolution data at very low cost and have high participation. This is a big collaborative effort, and I think this is indicative of the, uh, the idea of uh, open collaborative science, uh, and that's the real fun of it when we have folks from EPA and USDA and uh, the commercial farming operation here and software developers and hardware developers all working together. So it's, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> but we're also going to be piloting a project where we're co-deploying low-cost sensors with industry standard sensors. And that's the big focus of, of the initiative, is to develop a protocol by which we can not eliminate the need for the industry standard sensors, but use them to validate and calibrate this is really lower cost important. sensors that are more accessible to more people, to more farmers. Sir. We've got these cheapo soil moisture <laughs> monitors that also do temperature. And we're going to try to set this up next to fancier monitoring equipment that, uh, that they've got out there to see how they compare. So that's the, that's the plan. I'm gonna make a spot for my temperature sensor. We'll fill that and put that in, and then we're gonna put the soil in there until we're at 15. That's so Alex that Contosta kind of from uh, uh, UNH, okay. or the Center for Earth, Ocean, and Space Science. If you think about uh, civilization like a tree, with agriculture at the roots and the population at the trunk, and arts and commerce as the leaves and branches, and if people see themselves as part of that, where the commerce and leaves may not weather a storm, they may break and blow, but they will regrow. But if the roots of the tree are attacked, the entire system will wither and die. And that's part of this seeing oneself as part of the agrarian system. It's very important that we all have an interest in building strong roots. Pull up the data table, and there's my data. Yeah, so that's great. So it looks like, like everything is working really, really well.
So we have uh, the sensors installed in the soil. One of our objectives was to make sure that we could get end-to-end -end communications from the sensors in the field through to Farm OS. We've, we've done it. <laughs> Uh, moving that data through this uh, design will allow us to put dozens or hundreds of sensors through the same pathway. So that's very, very exciting. I think a big part of agriculture is creating a record that's publicly accessible so future generations don't have to duplicate uh, the, the work of generations past. And it's clearly in our global interest for every farmer to improve the land beneath their feet. So, that gives a context of where we were about a year ago uh, on this project. And I, I think one of the, the really key things that I'd like to sort of bridge uh, th that uh, uh, from the video to what Dan's talking about is the, the concept of participatory science, the, the transition to uh, inductive, the real focus on inductive research uh, to observational research. They're both science. Uh, but I think we're reaching the, some of the limits when we're looking at biological science to the deductive uh, approach. Uh, it's, it's, uh, and we're really maybe not paying as much attention to the exploratory process, which is much more inclusive. It's much more of a public science. If you think about deep space exploration or deep ocean exploration, that is, I think, closer to where we actually are with our understanding of the way biological and soil systems work. We overstated, I think, the level of exploration uh, that is still, still necessary. I mean, Leonardo, was it, uh, uh, Leonardo da Vinci had the famous quote, right? We understand uh, the, uh, the, what is it? The, the stars, uh, yeah, heavens above more than we understand the ground beneath our feet. And I think that's still true. And yet, we're at a time where we have tools for the first time in human history to observe at a greater resolution over all time. Really, when I, you know, I said in the film, it changes our perspective. We are now, now through our devices, <laughs> our observational devices, able to observe uh, throughout time and record history beyond just what we can observe. I mean, this is one of the reasons we went to, uh, science went to this exploratory science. It's very expensive to try and record all this data, but we have satellites above. We have sensors, uh, you know, at ground level that view in wavelengths that we can't per perceive. That the invisible is becoming visible, and we haven't really sort of adapted our way of in, of of view of working within the world to to accommodate for that yet. So this is this is part of a collective exploration that we're just starting on. I think it's it's kind of a new age of discovery. Um, we, we now are able to, with the microbiome work, to really understand all the, some of that complexity um, as, well, as well. So I, I pursue this idea of an observatory is really important and that uh, every farm, every backyard is part of that observatory. Um, and, it's, uh, and it's based on our ability, again, to take lots of observations and then start to uh, and, and advance this idea of a public science, where it's not just a few scientists that have expert knowledge, but that we move towards a, uh, a participatory process and that's driving towards, instead of expert opinion, data-driven decision-making. And that's a really big shift, uh, to move towards an accumulation of knowledge expressed in software and improved as we get more data, rather than looking to a few people to have to accumulate it and make their best recommendations. So I would say it really is about science. It's about the original idea of science, which is not about a few people know, knowing something, but everybody understanding the environment better. That's really the way I view the process of the enlightenment and the scientific, the, the, the purpose for science. So, uh, and 
this is not a new idea, especially in, in agricultural uh, circles, that this, this process of systems level thinking and uh, public science was really, this is a, an image from 1918 Encyclopedia for Practical Farm Knowledge showing the circulatory system of knowledge, information, and inspiration that was about that sort of public process. And this is sort of what the Granges were about, this community club, this public science of exchange of information and, and inspiration, because part of what we're doing is not just about, it is sort of getting that spark to drive uh, innovation and exploration that, that makes it, again, exciting to participate. And then, and this is coming into this, this process and the revelation of, of soil health. Now that we understand that the, these living processes, it's now okay to talk, and the biotech revolution, I was on a panel with you know, folks who want to uh, create uh, create uh, you know uh, cheese or uh, milk without cows and eggs without chickens, and other folks who are, who are in the 128 right out here in Boston, and yet we are all agreeing that we're talking about living systems, and we're all agreeing that they can improve and we can work with them. So this is it, when we talk now about soil health it's actually starting to be a mainstream idea that soils are a living system and they can be improved rather than just degraded with our, with our input. The, process, the question is, how do we engage in this process productively and how do we exchange that knowledge efficiently? Um, and so we know, again, we know we can do this process. The difference is management, the difference is people, the difference is our understanding and collectively sharing that information. This is just from our, our, our backyard, uh, you know, uh, um, a, uh, uh, a soil down the road uh, on the right that had actually been from one of the farms that had been in production the longest, I think it's the longest, uh, uh, the farm that's been in production the longest in, in, uh, in the United States. Uh, um, and most of that soil degradation you see on the right happened in the last 30 years. Um, and w we have a soil on the left that's above, above uh, the, the organic matter is above what would be there if it were, uh, were left alone. And so we know the difference is management, the difference is people, the difference is our understanding. And we now understand that we can transform these soils much faster than we thought. And it's not about building, it's about growing, it's about biological systems, it's about uh, transforming uh, from photosynthesis to creating deep roots. And you all know a lot about that. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna focus on that. We've got excellent books that are for sale that talk all about that <laughs> in Growing a Revolution and, and many more with David Montgomery's books here. Um, but from our perspective, from the, from, for this presentation to talk about Farm OS, it's about making the invisible visible. It's about how do we express that in software and make that knowledge exchangeable from one person to another so that we can see down below and look beyond what's uh, immediately visible. So uh, again, it's the process of creating these regenerative farm observatories so that we can transform this knowledge from global knowledge to local production to adapt. So again, we can go towards data-driven systems at, uh, at, at every farm. Every farm has access to the best possible knowledge uh, for their site. Um, and that it's a continuous adaptive process. It's not a process that ever ends. And that we start to break down these barriers between producers and researchers and the general public. I think that's really, really important, that this is a shared effort. We all have uh, pieces to, to play. So what does that look what, like? If you look back, think back to that circulatory system of exchange of information and inspiration, what we have from a software perspective is a whole bunch of tools that need to be linked together. And it can't be held, in my opinion, by any one large entity because it won't be trusted and they can't scale. So you can't have Microsoft, you can't have Google, you can't have, uh, you, you, uh, as big as Monsanto is, they can't own this whole process. And if they tried to, you wouldn't trust it because they wouldn't make it open. And so the only way, in my opinion, to do this is if we have a whole bunch of handshakes and we agree together, and that's what the open source system is. But 
to come back to uh, the tools we have, which are changing rapidly, we have action. This is what we often think about. That's what farmers do. They take action on the soil. But this is where we're really trying to, this is where all the magic happens, but it requires a whole bunch of other tools to inform it. So we mentioned you know, this observation, the observatory. This is where the farmer and researcher come together to, to, to gather and understand what happened. Uh, and in as much detail as possible, in different scales over time and uh, in different wavelengths and at different perspectives. But from the farmer's perspective, and this is where Farm West comes in, is that it has to be made really easy for the farmer. The farmer has only one piece of this. The rest of the public has a lot of interest in what happens. You know, we want to know that it's healthy food. We want to know that it's cleaning our water. We, so that's we we from that's part of the reason farm os is open source software and it's also meant as much as we have an interest in all that data we can use the same software to drive decision support tools to and to lower a lot of the uh, barriers that uh, farmers find themselves with all the public interest in what's going on so things like organic certification enter your data once it's the same data we need to drive uh, a lot of the decision support tools and a lot of the data that researchers want. Uh, gap certification, food safety uh, information, it's all the same basic data, but farmers are asked to re re uh, enter it again and again and again. So these are part of making observation tools efficient again, because all those certifications, that's just observation. That's just different ways of recording what happened. So let's make that easy. And we have a lot of tools that are, uh, that are now being able to, to use that. So these researcher models that are able to take this kind of data and aggregate it together and start to uh, uh, run complex computer uh, programs to predict work together with less work. Um, and so that's that's really what we've seen the explosion in other in other fields. You know, the internet really runs on open source. Tesla's made their their uh, their basic system open source to drive forward to uh, the Human Genome Project, another massive science project that the, the CERN, the largest science project in the world, has just announced that their science is going to be open source. And I think the idea is that. Uh, and Sally Rockley, who's uh, heading the Foundation for Food and Agriculture uh, Research, introduced me to the term pre-competitive space. Let's agree to compete, but let's co compete not on the science. Let's move the science forward. Let's compete on the production. Profit from production, not protection. So that's, I think, a really important thing. So we can still have some of the benefits of competition, but let's, let's not do it on our shared understanding of our environment. So what we can do here is really start to connect these national and global networks of, of, uh, of supply chains and organizations that represent farmers and farmer organizations and uh, build hubs, uh, these uh, farm observatory hubs, regenerative agriculture hubs, where we can use the best practices, where we find the bright spots. People are doing really great jobs. Use that to push forward and document. So we're not anecdotal about this. We're really documenting way beyond what other systems, you know, we now have access to tools to be able to do this. Let's document it. Let's show. Let's not just think that this is a better system because we, we've observed it. Let's document it so we can go from observational to quanti these observational tools can now quantify some of those outputs. That's what Greg's going to talk a lot about. Farm OS is a way to unify and to have some of those conversations, that open architecture to bring those things together, in addition to being a farmer, farm level tool to uh, uh, reduce uh, labor costs, um, and a way to get to location specific recommendations. Um, so that's really, it's, it's really a social process. We have a lot of the technical pieces. It's a process of, uh, of uh, agreeing uh, that we, it's work to do this, uh, but in the long run, it will be far less work and very, very rewarding. Um, and so one of the outcomes of our recent meeting was to begin this process of uh, creating interoperability between systems 
get out in the field and start testing it. This has to be farmer driven. It has to be farmer designed, farmer, uh, farmer owned and secure. We know that that's one of the most important things to be trusted. That trust is so important in the, the whole system. We have some legacy uh, that we can plug into this that's really valuable. A lot of government data is locked up and not accessible. We can pull that in just like the soils maps. We have weather data. We have a lot of things like that that we can pull in and get to the farm level to make it useful. Because a lot of it's sort of siloed and, and stuck in places. But we, we, can, we can do this. Um, so that's what we're doing. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm research director at Wolf's Neck Farm. So we're doing this there uh, to, uh, to pilot up in uh, Freeport, Maine. But uh, we're also partnering with a lot of other organizations uh, to do this, the same, to create this participatory uh, science uh, model. Um, just a little bit of background on Wolf's Neck, 600 acres on Casco Bay uh, with an intersection of freshwater, saltwater, forest, and uh, uh, agricultural grazing and uh, other production uh, and uh, row crop production systems. Um, so the plan is we're building a, a one hub of many uh, and piloting this the concept of farm observatory, this public science, but part of a network. The point isn't to do it in isolation. The point is to make it replicable and build that out. Uh, we're working with a lot of other networks, as I mentioned, uh, other research universities, other educational farms, other organizations like uh, the um, uh, National Association for Conservation Districts. I'm one of the soil health uh, champions uh, as part of a, a network to have champions in every single state across the country. This is part of our process of get documenting every one of those champions uh, and the, the conditions and the practices behind what's happening on those farms. Um, other organizations like uh, uh, Field to Market and, uh, and uh, Sustainable Food Labs also represent lots of farms in the, in the supply chain that can be brought in and, and documented. So, Lots of potential for, uh, for partnerships in the Northeast, uh, inter uh, nationally and internationally. Um, so the plan, of course, is to do the cellular reproduction model <laughs> to spread this, spread this knowledge and these hubs and the social networks that uh, go along with them. Uh, so we have uh, everything needs to, be, uh, needs to be adapted to the local conditions, but they're linked uh, together. So global knowledge, local production. Uh, local adaptation. Um, and this is just a, a quick chart when we're working with uh, Stonyfield to show what the potential is as we replicate this for uh, global, uh, for carbon capture for at, the, uh, at the, about a half a percent per acre per year. No, sorry, half a percent organic matter increase over 10 years. Uh, that puts us at uh, 2 million uh, uh, CO2 equivalent uh, at that's only at 10,000 farms. So there's a lot of, lot of, a lot of potential. And then uh, we, we're seeing a rapid reduction in the, in the cost of implementation of the observation technology in farms. And the soil carbon capture is just one of the many benefits that we will be able to quantify. So we have weather-related uh, uh, weather soil resilience. We have uh, increase in uh, in premiums for understanding the production processes, increases in water quality, habitat improvement, all of those, once they're quantified, that's what you need to create a market to create incentives. And so that's the other piece, as we were talking about, not just quantification to, to, to document our, the change in our systems, but to, but to also drive, that's what we need to have these conversations, to drive towards quantitative conversations between farmers, between customers and farmers. Uh, it's a different conversation. I mean, I would argue even uh, when we're talking about the climate, the 350 or 450, it gives us something quantify quantifiable to change the conversation. Um, so that's, that's our, our vision. Uh, and uh, I'm really excited to, uh, to, there's lots of developments on the PharmaOS platform itself. Uh, Mike is now full-time developing uh, new, uh, uh, new capabilities, uh, but again, as an open platform, the vision isn't is to uh, to expand that community 
uh, of development, and we're really seeing seeing that that happen. Um, so do we? Let's check it. Do a time check. Uh, does it, is this on? Yeah. So this is farmos.org if you want to find out more information, I start there. Um, on there you can find uh, a user guide for uh, getting involved. Um, also a getting started page if you want to figure out how to get up and running on it. Um, as well as information about architecture and that kind of thing. Uh, so Zoom is kind of weird on this right now. Um, so this is actually Wolf Snack Farm on FarmOS. Uh, so you can see you can map out all of your areas. You can um, get information about the soil tests and plantings that are in each area just by clicking on them. Uh, you, you, it's essentially built around logs. So you, you end up creating records of things that happened in the past uh, or that are planned for the future. You can mark them done or not done. And that's how you kind of create your records and your plans. So up top you can see we've got, we break it up into areas, assets, logs, and people. And again, this is kind of farmer focused first. So this is a tool for farmers, but it's also a database to, to store all of this information and then allow sharing of that information if you want to. So it's private first, but you know, we're building options for sharing pieces that, that would be you know, useful to other people. And, and just to, to mention along those lines, we piloted at Wolfsnack uh, earlier this uh, spring, if you've been following sort of the blockchain craziness. Uh, in technology, we we're, we're able to actually stream environmental data through FarmOS and then push it to a blockchain server. Yeah, it may and this or may is not actually... mean anything to you, but it <laughs> it's uh, it basically creates provenance. It means that that data uh, can be trusted from that point on. It can't. It's uncorruptible essentially. So, and this is actually the Campbell data logger that we showed up on the screen. So, this is the data that's coming in on that to uh, Wolfsnack. Um, uh, this is Dorn's farm. Let me... uh, so, you know, you can see that you can you can use it for managing your plantings and uh, beds on the farm, um, kind of jumping around here and, but, uh, but also, but notice how you can quickly view a whole bunch of different farms and get a pretty good even quickly you get a sense of oh what's going on on that farm? There's a lot of animals. There are not so many animals. They're rotating. They're not rotating. They've got a lot of diversity in their crop history or they don't. That's all instantly uh, accessible. And it's important to note that it's not designed uh, for large scale only. It's designed for pretty much any scale. We tried to think about the, the you know, records in as flexible a way as possible. So this is my place. Uh, it's just a couple of acres and I just have some garden beds and stuff here. But that's just to demonstrate that you know, it can be on, on small scales to backyard. And you're saying the, the most recent developments have actually been for grazing systems, which are really designed for multi-thousand acre ranch systems. Mm -hmm. So, but the, the, the idea is that there are insights from large scale systems that are appropriate for small scale systems and small scale for large, and from one production system to another. So that's been the challenge and where a lot of the work has gone is to make the description of agricultural systems universal and yet still make it useful and be able to describe any kind of production systems, including some of the more complex things that the commercial systems won't do. Things like interseeding and animal rotations and, uh, and overseeding or grazing cover crops, all those kinds of systems that are very difficult in a commercial type, uh, the, the systems that are being offered by the, by the large proprietary systems, because they're customized for a very specific type of agriculture. Uh, this just shows that you can record all of your soil tests, so you can look back, uh, you know, uh, over the years, and put exactly where you took the samples from, so you can really uh, keep a 
keep as you know as detailed as a record as you want. You can attach the records. I'm I'm actually working with the Vermont NRCS to uh, put together a system that will be able to transmit electronically the results of those soil tests to your farm OS so that you can get that data entered automatically for you. Um, now we're starting to build out some more advanced features on top. So the first step was kind of laying all the groundwork, getting the, the relationships and records together. Now we, we can really start leveraging that to build more advanced things. So this is a, um, a paddock, a herd. This is a rotational uh, grazing planning system. So for each herd, you can uh, say what paddocks they're going to rotate through. You can see when they're going to be in the paddock and what the recovery time of that paddock is. And each of these is linked to a log. So you know on your to-do list, if I go back to the home page, um, you say, OK, I, now I know I need to move this herd to this paddock on this date. And then you can just say, yep, did that. Or you can assign it to someone, that kind of thing. Um, I also, this spring, worked with uh, the, the University of Vermont um, to develop a produce safety module for PharmOS. And what this provides is uh, record types to meet the certification requirements and record keeping requirements of the produce safety rule of the um, Food, and Safe, Food Safety and Modernization Act. So these are just some examples of things that we're starting to build on top that also uh, you know, provide provide uh, tools and direct benefits to farmers. The whole system is modular, so if you're not required to, to record produce safety records, you just don't turn that module on. Same thing with, um, with you know, most of these things. So if I jump back to, let's see, where's, where was I? Uh, this one. So this is mine. Um, I have some additional modules uh, for managing bee colonies, uh, maple, mushrooms, and sensors, so you know, new modules can be added that provide more entity types, and they all work with, within the same kind of framework. Um, so it's a very general platform we're trying to build for record keeping and planning. That's the, was that five minutes? <laughs> so we'll take a quick 15 minute um, coffee and pee break. There's uh, snacks outside, the bathroom's right over there, and get back on talk about the tool and um, all the quality stuff after the break. <clears throat>